So thank you, uh, really great to be here with uh, all uh, this focus on the AI and uh, of course uh, creative activities like music. It's really great, it's, it's, it's exploding and you know when uh, I've been thinking a lot, what, what the hell can I say? I mean, <laughs> because the situation is really confusing today. As you know, there are lots of things going on and I thought, you know, the only thing I can do is share a few thoughts about uh, not only not not let say not music but really harmonization, composition, and production to be a bit more specific, let's say. And wh while I was uh, thinking about you know what can I say, I, I look at this title and then I thought well, but the, actually there is another title I could as uh, I could actually use, which is this one. You know, what what is going on with music actually? Uh, I'm talking about popular music here, mainstream music. I'm not talking about experimental classical, uh, you know, uh, or any uh, other kind that really uh, popular. So as maybe you, you know, there are lots of research now converging with the idea that popular music is really declining. And uh, <laughs> I can say it, I mean, I've always felt this was the case, but now it's really official. And so <clears throat> uh, the reason why I was interested in AI and music in the, actually was precisely to try to see whether AI could be used to make better music, more interesting songs, uh, more interesting harmonic sequences, uh, uh, melodies. You know, a nice melody to me, I, I'm not able to define exactly, but for instance, it's a melody where you have other things like a, than the seconds or thirds, you know, fourths and fifths and sixths and things like that. So this has totally disappeared from the, the domain of popular music. And I thought, hey, great AI, we, with AI we can help composer, you know, be more bold or audacious or inventive or that kind of stuff. So that's the reason why I've been uh, looking at all this. And so I've been designing systems for, I don't know exactly how much time, like designing systems because I'm mostly an AI researcher, but also always trying to use them and, and do actual music and then see, you know, how much we could go in that direction. So we, we did this album in 2018, which is already five years ago, which was the first album composed, a pop album, pop music uh, composed with AI. And I think I made a mistake because at that time I thought, you know, what is the best way to evaluate whether an AI system is good for composition? Uh, it's not by measuring stuff only because measuring stuff, you know, it's very hard to measure. It has been said before, you know, what, what exactly you want to measure. But I thought it was, you know, let's do a song and then let's distribute the song and then let's see whether the song is going to be a hit, you know, if people like it. That was a mistake because at that time I didn't know much about the music industry. I know much better now, and I know that a hit song has not, nothing to do with the intrinsic quality of the music. I, I was very naive, you know, so sorry for that. But still, it was really interesting to, to, to try to use these systems and try to push people to, to do new kinds of stuff. And so, uh, so, so before, I will, uh, I will uh, show you just one example very quickly, but before doing this, I want to talk briefly about, the first thing is, uh, let's say, harmonization. So, because I think that was the title of the, of the session, is I think AI better than back, so David has talked about that. I just want to show two things. It's really interesting because it's really 60 years apart. So, in 56, there was this thing called uh, Iliac Suite. I don't know if I, if I play, if it's going to work. No, does not. Oops. So maybe you have to do something with the sound here. No, no, it's not HDMI. It's supposed to be uh, audio. Yes. Okay, so I will, I will. It should be. Oh yeah, I know. No, it's not. So that's the challenge. Challenge. I'm going to talk about the music that you should have heard. <laughs> No, it doesn't work. All right. Again. But it worked uh, just before, no? Did it? Oops, sorry. I'm not. I can try again the HDMI, yes, but. Uh, Oh, 
is not going to work for the network. It's awful. <laughs> It was, wow, well, maybe I made a, didn't look, no, yeah, it's, it's the right, it's, it's the right place. the right one. That's not the microphone. So. Because here, if I do this. <sighs> yeah, it's not very good. So I will go back to, sorry, I'll go back to the speakers, to, to my speakers. But you see, even my speakers doesn't work. Yeah. Bluetooth? Yes. Try Bluetooth. Like, like this? Yeah. Settings? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can do it. Sorry. So the point I was trying to make <laughs> was I, would, I wanted to show, to play a few seconds of this Iliac Suite. Iliac Suite was designed with the idea of uh, modeling uh, Bach uh, chorales for voice, at least a part of the Iliac Suite, Iliac Suite with very, very uh, old rudimentary Markov chain technologies dating from the 50s. Very, very rudimentary order one, generate and test, uh, very simple. And I wanted to play a few seconds of this. You can listen to this, on the, it's on the, the web. And then I wanted to play uh, Deep Bach, which is uh, the, the model we did in two, 60 years later, in 2016, with uh, recurrent networks which uh, really was shown to be as good as Bach. I mean, this is, we can debate for hours, but really, no, it doesn't work. Oh, great. Oh, going to be very abstract. So, <laughs> but even this doesn't work. What, what's going on? It's crazy. Did I do something wrong? No, no, we, just, we should play at least these things, okay, right? Obviously, the, the light skips. The skips. It's like 10 seconds of the video every time. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, we'll try again with the speakers, right? If I do this, they are dead. Then All you've right. got to tell it to be out. Okay, speaker. never mind. So, sorry? So this is the uh, uh, Iliac Suite and this is the Deep Bach. Deep Bach is obviously very good. I mean, it's, it's... So this was like uh, the soprano was fixed and uh, everything else was generated and lots of tests have been done and really it learned very well. Maybe not perfectly, but very well. And what I wanted to, 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 to let you, uh, you know, uh, consider was AI better than Bach? Oh, well, um, maybe, but what about, oh, oh now it works. Oh. But what about Markov better than AI? What I mean here is that if you now think about what is of these two examples, the thing that I would like to listen twice or three times, in my case, there is no, uh, hesitation. The Bach thing is an exercise. It's a great exercise and, and the system is really extremely good at, imitation, at imitating Bach. The first one is really very interesting, very inventive. It's very bad at Bach. It would have received a very low grade. So the question we, that I think that we are a bit misled because we are both like scientists and musicians and we always talk about better. So what better means in science or technology, it does not really correspond always to what better means in music. So in, in this case, it's very interesting because Bach is always used as a, as a, as a slogan, you know, or as a reference point. And I think that the, the, the less good you are at imitating Bach, then the more interesting the music is going to get at the end. But so, so we have conflicting notions of better, let's say. I wanted to play, but here again, sorry. Uh, do you hear something? Children shed their dreams. 
All right, so, so this is a melody which was entirely uh, composed by AI, which we fed with a number of songs, including one maybe you have recognized, which is the last song which is played in the Jungle Book, when the girl, uh, the, sorry, Mugli uh, leaves his uh, friend and goes to see the girl. Uh, and you can recognize bits and pieces of this in, in there. And I thought that I think this is really a typical example of what I think AI should do. That is, pick up these examples, do something totally new, but keeping the mood and the style, and yet be inventive. I mean, I, we could talk more, you know, for more time about why I think this melody is really nice. I don't know of any other example. This was done uh, in eight, 2008, 18. And in the album, there are lots of examples of this. But since then, I have never heard any single time anything like that. I'm talking about the compositional aspect, melody, harmony, rhythm, and the intrications of these things. I've never heard. And, and this was not done with neural networks, by the way. It was done with uh, models which are a little bit less powerful. Um, but uh, so again, better. So now we have better models. We don't have better melodies. I never heard any, 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 any way. And if you disagree, please, you know, let's talk about that. This project was stopped. Why? Uh, because I mentioned Mugli and the Jungle Book, copyright issues. So copyright issues is exactly like, like this. Now the AI is trying to push up and the copyright owners trying to block, especially in Europe, not part of this anymore. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> in Europe, we have laws that basically are such that the situation is totally blocked. And this, very, this is very unfortunate because we should exactly do that. We should be able to say, I want to take How Deep Is Your Love? I want to take a Beatles song. I want to take this and this song and this song. And then I want to do something new with this. It's currently, it's impossible. It's forbidden by law. I mean, and uh, this is why, maybe one of the reasons why there is nothing, this is a statement here I'm doing, there is nothing interesting going on in composition in a, with AI currently in songwriting, nothing. One of the reasons is this one. I, I, if I have the time, but I don't think I have lots of time, uh, I want just to, add to, 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 to play another example of, what, uh, of harmonization, what we call a rhythm transfer. So basically, because I think it's really interesting, so this is a problem that we created by looking at what kind of tools we, we could do with AI. And, and uh, we invented this notion of rhythm transfer. You know, would it be, it would be nice if we could take the harmony of a song, the uh, rhythm of another song, and mix them, right? And it's not very clear what it means, <laughs> actually. But uh, so you have two songs, you try to find a, a try, create a new song that is close harmonically to one and close rhythmically to the other. So if you think about the guitar, it's basically you have the left hand of a song and the right hand of another song. So the right hand is more or less the rhythm and the left is more or less the harmony, more or less. Looks simple, it's very hard because usually the harmony and the uh, rhythm don't fit together. You have too many notes, not enough notes. So it's really a generation problem. And so we have done this. I just want to show you a few, a few examples here, which are, I think, ah, no, you can't. I have, no, you won't hear, will you? So this is a chord sequence that is played with, with kind of jazzy chords, right? And I want to apply this harmony to uh, things that exist. I will just show you the next video just so that it goes faster. Uh, and you, you get the idea, you play chord and it transforms the harmony of existing stuff. So this is the shape of you, of you the, guitar arpeggios or marimba arpeggios. This is very nice because Bach has never played these jazz chords really and it really works very well. This is the shape of my heart. I just want to play the last one. It's too bad you don't hear well. This is a Brahms with the Chikora chords. So it's harmony of Korea and, and the music of Brahms. And uh, <coughs> you have videos on the web if you want to, to do more. Sorry. So this is really something very, it's new. It's definitely new. It's not a pastiche. It's not a, oh, sorry. 
uh, and, that, and it's not uh, you know, plagiarism, it's something really new, uh, which is made possible by, by music and AI. So, so I wanted to, I think I have to shift, uh, to skip, sorry, to talk about what's going on today. Today's situation is very strange because there are incredible results about, it has been mentioned before, voice synthesis, as you know, you know the weekend and draft, uh, and, and Drake, sorry. Uh, and, uh, and so I wanted to show, I will not play it, but we, we, we did this pastiche of the Beatles a few years, uh, in seven, in uh, 16, called Daddy's Car, which was sung by uh, Benoit Carré, a French uh, musician. Now we, I, I don't play it, you, you have it on the web, but you can play it with you know, any other voice. It worked really great. Uh, I just maybe one second if it works, but uh, uh, and that's totally uh, I totally was not something we could have imagined a few years ago. It's, it's incredible, but don't don't forget it has nothing to do with composition. It's pure technology, voice synthesis. Uh, I wanted to say a few words about prompt-based music generation. It has also been mentioned. I have some examples here. We ask jazz trio playing bossa nova. We have something like this. Yeah, it's like a kind of jazz trio. Then we say, okay, can you play a random notes? Can you play fast bebop? And it's all the same. So there is no capacity of the, of the system to really go deep into one direction, which I think is, is something really human. You know, you have something you like, then you, you dive in, as you say in English, right? Uh, so basically, the, uh, the large language model, what they have, they have a shallow model of the world. And that's a discussion that's currently going on, which is very, very interesting. Also with uh, Jan Lequin, is talking also about that. There is no grounding, right? I will finish on that. What does it mean? It means the system, they talk about stuff like trees and cars and cats, but they don't know what it means. And what does it mean to know what it means? It means to have a grounding that is, for instance, if I talk about a piano, I have experiences with piano, I, have, I know the sound, the weight, I know lots of stuff because I have real world experience. And so many people work now on trying to add grounding to LLMs. The question I have is, what is grounding for music? You know, what does it mean? Uh, because in music, you don't have concepts. Uh, so grounding would mean having a system that knows, and if you play that kind of uh, note called sound, it will trigger that kind of uh, you know, emotions in me, maybe in others. So the, the main problem we have with AI, I think today is exactly that one, no grounding. So we have a completely superficial systems which have a very shallow models of the world. This is one example, you know. <laughs> uh, the cow is 5.2 meters. In some sense, it's true. But so because uh, the system does, doesn't have any experience with cows, that's all right. And so with music and AI, it's a bit the same, I think, that we have today, uh, same situation. S uh, Sting himself says that we are not there yet. He does not think that AI can do interesting songs. And I think this is a great quote that we should use to challenge him and to show him that, yes, we can actually do interesting songs with AI, but there are lots of issues to solve. I, I've mentioned grounding. Copyright issues, which are really a pain. <clears throat> and, another, and the last thing is, if you want my opinion, which you did not ask really, but I will give it to you anyway. So the, the, the research now is totally focused on algorithms, on the transformers today. And what happened, you know? It used to be that we were focused on problems. So <clears throat> the problems have disappeared. Now it's, I have an algorithm and I want to find an area where I can actually use it and do something spectacular. And I think we should come back, we researchers should come back to problem oriented and actually music driven goals. Uh, what, what, what are examples? And I should stop. For instance, uh, Beethoven is, is well known for composing themes, right? Things which are like two bars or four bars, which are so strong that you can elaborate on them for a whole uh, piece, right? Uh, what does it mean to have a strong theme? Can we do this with AI? Improvisation like a human uh, with, with fluctuations of tempo, guessing the tune that we are playing, you know, changing it, all that. No one is able to do this. Compose a song that McCartney will find extraordinary. So Paul McCartney says that the best song ever written is uh, God Only Knows by uh, the Beach Boys, right? Okay, can we make a song that McCartney says, no, the best song is that song? So that's a good challenge, right? But that's not at all the challenges that people have currently. Uh, 
create a, uh, you know, a scores or songs that people want to play, not things which are hits. That was a mistake to try to do that. Uh, revive when shorter, so melodic harmonization style. So what I'm, I'm trying to say here is try to have uh, concrete goals. If you, because there is a, an hypothesis in AI which is like everything is the same. So if you have a, mo a good model for, for uh, imitating Bach, then the model can imitate any other composer. But maybe that's not true. Maybe all these guys have completely different ways of uh, seeing the music and so forth. So my message is yes, uh, what's new in AI? Well, in my opinion, nothing, because we still have the problem of no one is able to compose a nice song easily with AI. And uh, what should we do? Come back to concrete problems. Thank you very much. And sorry for that. <laughs>